Hello, uh, Ivan time again. Um, we're going to flip back here and get our brain bookmark set uh, so we can imagine where we're at, uh, visualize where we're at, and then pick up on page 157 today. Uh, so as I literally flip back and look, and you can look back with me, um, the last 10, 15, 20 pages, I remember I looked at these X's and it caught my eye. I remember Ivan was marking down how many days he's been with humans. And he got to what? 9,876 days. Guys, that's like 27 years um, that he's been away uh, from his sister, right? Um, we heard we heard a little bit about his sister. We've heard a little bit about the family. Um, I hope you, I've been saying this, but you can see the shift happening. Um, the stuff stuff kind of changing a little bit with Ivan because he's starting to do what now? And I bet you can remember. It is. It's remembering, right? Um, and for Ruby, she's asking for stories. She's saying, what about jokes? What about this and that? Um, so ever since Stella's died, you can notice stuff switching up here. Uh, the rest of this section we read um, was only about Ivan. He's telling us a little bit about how many days he's been here. Um, and then a new beginning is what it said. Um, and that's when Ruby is starting her training. Um, starting to have... Getting walked around the ring, starting to use Stella's old uh, stool. Snickers is coming out. She's uh, trying to get trained and pulled on with the ropes and stuff with Mac. Um, and we had a little incident with Mac. I see the last word we read here was poor Mac. And I remember now uh, while he was training Ruby and she was starting to get a little tired, a little upset. Uh, Ivan was too. Bob was watching. We were all watching. And then she finally got him, right? He whipped out that claw stick. Uh, which to me, in my head, I picture this long stick with a curved hook on the end of it um, that animal trainers, bad animal trainers, would use to kind of intimidate or hurt animals with. So we didn't actually hit her with it, but he swung it at her a couple times and poked her with it a little bit. Uh, but it said, I don't know where she got, where he got hit, but Mac rolled on the ground like a little baby. And he said it was somewhere below the waist. So you can make an inference of where he got hit. Uh, direct hit, according to Bob, right? Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. So we're going to pick up on 157. It's called Colors. Uh, so here we go. Julia opens the metal box. I see a row of little squares. Green, blue, red, black, yellow, purple, orange. The colors seem to glow. Oh, I remember this too. Remember she had just shown up and she had paint, right? She brought paint with her. Julia did. So that must be what he's talking about. She pulls out a brush with a thin tuft of tail at its end. She dips the brush in water and wets the paper, then taps at the red square. When the brush meets the damp paper, pink petals of color unfurl like morning flowers. I can't take my eyes off that magical brush. For a moment, I'm not thinking about Ruby and Mac and the claw stick and Stella. Almost. Remember, he says he uses art to escape, right? So the paint looks really good to him. Even all this stuff going on with Ruby and Mac and... The claw stick and Stella. Art always has a way to find Ivan, right? Julia touches red again and then blue. And there, suddenly, is the purple of a ripe grape. She touches the blue and her paper turns to summer sky. Black and white. And now I see she is painting a picture of Ruby. I can make out her floppy ears, her thick legs. Julia stops painting. She takes a few steps back, hands on her hips, gazing at her work. She scowls. It's not right, she says. She glances over her shoulder at me. I try to look encouraging. Julia starts to crumple up the paper, then reconsiders. Instead, she slides it into my cage at the spot where my glass is broken. Here you go, she says. A Julia original. That'll be worth millions someday. Gingerly, I pick up the paper. I do not eat a single bite of it. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. Julia runs to her backpack. She pulls out three plastic jars, one yellow, one blue, and one red. She opens the jars, and an odd not-food smell hits my nose. Julia pushes the jars one by one through the opening. Then she slides some paper through. They're called finger paints, she says. My aunt gave them to me, but really, I'm too old for finger painting. I stick my finger into the red jar. The paint is thick as mud. It's cool and smooth like bananas underfoot. 
I pop my finger into my mouth. It's not exactly a ripe mango, but it's not bad. Julia laughs. You don't eat it. You paint with it. She grabs a piece of paper and presses her finger on it. See? Like this. I place my finger on the piece of paper. I lift it, and a red mark is there. I get a bigger glob from the pot and slap my hand down on the page. When I pull all of my hand off the paper, its red twin stays behind. This isn't like a ghostly fingerprint on my glass, the ones my visitors leave behind. This handprint can't be so easily wiped away. There's a little Ivan print. Well, not a little, right. Giant Ivan print. A bad dream. I lie awake, peeling dried paint off my fingertips. Bob, who accidentally walked on one of my paintings, is licking his red paws. Every so often, I glance over at the empty ring. The claw stick glints in the moonlight. Stop! No! Ruby's frantic cry startled me. Ruby, I call. You having a bad dream? You're okay. You're safe. Where's Stella? She asked, gulping for air. Before I answer, she said, Never mind. I remember now. Go back to sleep, Ruby, I say. You've had a hard day. I can't go back to sleep, she says. I'm afraid I'll have the same dream. There was a sharp stick and it hurt. I look at Bob, and he looks back at me. Oh, Ruby says. Oh, Mac. She puts her trunk between the bars. Do you think, she hesitates, do you think Mac is mad because I heard him today? I consider lying, but gorillas are terrible liars. Probably, I finally say. He ran away after that, Ruby says. Bob gives a scornful laugh. Crawled away is more like it. We are quiet for a while. Branches, branches claw at the roof. A light rain drums. One of the parrots murmurs something in her sleep. Ruby breaks the silence. Ivan, I smell something funny. He can't help it, Bob says. I believe she's referring to the finger paints Julia gave me, I say. What are finger paints? Ruby asked. You make pictures with them, I explain. Can you make a picture of me? Maybe someday. I remember Julia's picture, the one that will be worth millions of dollars. I hold it up to the glass. Look, it's you. Julia made it. It's hard to see, Ruby says. There's not much moonlight. Why do I have two trunks? I examine the picture. Those are feet. Why do I have two feet? That's called artistic license, Bob says. Ruby sighs. Could you tell me another story, she asked. I don't think I could ever go back to sleep. I told you all I remember, I say, with a helpless shrug. Then tell me a new story, she says. Make something up. I try to think, but my thoughts keep returning to Mac and the claw stick. Anything yet? Ruby asks. I'm working on it. Ivan, Ruby presses. Bob said you were going to save me. I, I search for true words. I'm working on that too. Ivan, Ruby says in a voice so low I can barely hear her. I have another question. I can tell from the sound of her voice that this will be a question I do not want to answer. Ruby taps her trunk against the rusty iron bars of her door. Do you think, she asks, that I'll die in this domain someday, like Aunt Stella? Once again, I consider lying. When I look at Ruby, the half-formed words die in my throat. Not if I can help it, I say instead. I feel something tighten in my chest, something dark and hot. And it's not a domain, I add. I pause, and then I say, it. It's a cage. Guys, this page is huge, okay? That is the shift I'm talking about. Do you notice that? What are, That change right there just happened. Not a domain. Remember, a domain, it's proud. It's my room. It's my territory. That's what it said in the beginning of the book. That's what he's always called it. And then right there, it's not a domain. It's a cage. 
I'm going to ask you for that in the discussion question today. So I want to see what you think about that. And that's a really sad question. Do you think I'll die in this domain like Aunt Stella? So he, she asked that question and something shifts. All right, we're going to read a couple more pages, guys. The story. I look at the ring, layered with fresh sawdust. I look at the skylight and the half-hidden moon. I just thought of a story, I say. Is it a made-up story or a true one? Ruby asked. True, I say. I hope. Ruby leans against the bars. Her eyes hold the pale moon in them. The way a still pond holds stars. Once upon a time, I say, there was a baby elephant. She was smart and brave, and she needed to go to a place called a zoo. What's a zoo? Ruby asked. A zoo, Ruby, is a place where humans make amends. A good zoo is a place where humans care for animals and keep them safe. Did the baby elephant get to go to the zoo? Ruby asked softly. I don't answer right away. Yes, I say at last. How did she get there? Ruby asked. She had a friend, I say, a friend who made a promise. Who made a promise? Ivan made a promise. Who's the elephant, right? Stories about Ruby, right? Is, he, is it a true story? Well, he hopes so. Hmm. How? It takes a long time, but I finally reach Ruby. Finally, Ruby returns to sleep. Ivan. Bob whispers, yawning. What you said about the zoo? How are you going to do it? Suddenly I feel as if I could sleep for a thousand days. I don't know, I admit. You'll think of something, Bob says confidently, his voice trailing off as his eyes close. What if I don't, I ask. But Bob is already asleep, his little feet dancing. And I know he's running in his dream. Remembering. Bob and Ruby sleep on. I don't sleep. I think about the promise I made Stella. And the pictures I've made for Ruby. And I remember. I remember it all. He's remembering, guys. So, we're going to stop there, okay? Um, and uh, hopefully you have some reaction to that. Um, crazy kind of stuff going on here. Um, sorry, I'll just click around and make sure I don't want to go any further. Um, and I think I'm going to read two more pages. He remembers it all. Let's see what he says. What they did. We were clinging to our mother, my sister and I, when the humans killed her. They shot my father next. Then they chopped off their hands, their feet, their heads. He rem Ivan remembers what they did. Something else to buy. There is a cluttered, musty store near my cage. They sell an ashtray there. It is made from a hand of a gorilla. So, guys, we are going to stop there. That's page 171. Um, I'm going to put some discussion questions or some questions here, so check it afterward. Um, again, guys, this is getting deep here. This is getting crazy. Um, Ruby coming and Stella dying and uh, the promise to Stella. It's all coming, uh, making this whole world change here at the Big Top Mall, right? Uh, so hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll pick up tomorrow with some, uh, or next time with some more reading. Uh, but check for activities and do some thinking while you're reading. Do some visualizing while you're reading. Um, and hopefully you're comprehending this and picking it up. And that's my goal, right, guys, is to uh, make you better readers and hopefully enjoy reading. And I hope you're liking this book. And I will see you later.